Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to share with you and react to a certain video that I came across online by the YouTube channel called Big Think, and it is a neuroscientist's take on shopping addictions. I thought now would be a really good time to share this video and react with you and I'd love to have a bit of a conversation in the comments down below because I know for me in the past, December has been previously one of the years in which my shopping addiction definitely ramped up a couple of notches and again like if you've watched some of my videos in the past talking about these types of things it definitely comes back to the the psychological element of the addiction and what triggered it most for me which was loneliness feelings of inadequacy or just certain emotional things that i wasn't dealing with because at the time of this time of year christmas can really like be an emotional time for some people and you know if you're feeling not great sometimes that can be a little bit amplified around this time of year um, and this was the time of year that I would usually just be splurging, you know, oh my god, gifts for myself, you know, like, g g treat yourself, gifts for me. Um, and this year, I haven't done that, and I actually didn't do that last year either. So I really wanted to share this video with you today and have a little bit of discussion in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. It's only a short video. I'm going to squidge across so we can watch it together here. <clears throat> the human brain is not a thinking machine that feels. It's a feeling machine that thinks. Humans have- I'm like seven seconds in, we're already stopping it. The brain is not a thinking machine. It is a feeling machine. Humans have this innate desire to seek a sense of control. Driven by our strong emotions, we start making rational decisions when it comes to buying. We buy products simply because we want to gain a sense of control. At the same time, our innate desire to seek instant gratification drive us to buy more and more. How can we resist being manipulated into spending? With neuromarketing, we can understand how our emotions, feelings, and intuition shape our buying decisions. Money can bring joy, security, excitement, and satisfaction. At the same time, money can bring worry, jealousy, resentment, and anxiety. And what really drives our need to shop? This is Your Brain on Money. This is Terry Wu. He's a neuroscientist and a marketing consultant. Terry Wu. I need to look more into Terry Wu. A neuroscientist and a marketing consultant? Hmm. That sounds, that's interesting. I don't know, something in that, like it just, I'd like to know more about what kind of marketing he does and like what kind of consulting he does, but yeah, damn, I don't know. Like something in me, I guess it's just because of where I'm at now in my headspace. Something about that just seems like, oh, you're using your powers for, I don't want to say like evil, but I mean, he's a neuroscientist who specializes in the nervous system, who specializes in the brain function, in the cognitive, the cognitive abilities. Um, and he's using, if he's using that to potentially program people into wanting to buy stuff. Mm, ugh. I don't know. That's interesting. Wants people to understand the irrational forces driving their spending habits. Okay. Maybe he's using it for good. ...to feel first and think later. The emotional brain is called the limbic system. It's responsible for our, all our emotions, like joy, happiness, anger. So I just want to read this. I want to pause this right, ha right now so you can get a good look at it. But the emotional brain limbic system is the oldest part of our brain. It's, you know, memory, motivation, learning, hormones, fight or flight, addiction. So addiction does sit in the limbic brain. Happiness, anger, fear, and anxiety. The rational brain is called the frontal cortex, it is heavily involved in reason and logic. Sometimes these two systems conflict with each other and our decisions are the results of a complex interaction. At the start of the COVID-19- So yeah, the frontal part of our brain is the youngest, I think, that the limbic system is the oldest and that's responsible for emotions. And, and shopping, spending money, having an addiction or impulsive shopping tendencies does for the most part come down to an emotional response. It's an emotion, it's emotional driven activity. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, many Americans stockpiled toilet paper, but not because it had anything- Yeah, okay, sorry, I know. I mean, this is a reaction video. Who, t drop it in the comments down below. Were you one of these people? I wasn't, I wasn't one of these people. Okay, I thought, no, people are out here acting crazy. Um, and I thought, no, I'm going to be rational. I let my my, <laughs> my frontal cortex lead the way on this one. And then I just bit me in the butt. And I was the one left 
struggling without toilet paper, okay, doing late night runs to the grocery store, waiting for the drop, waiting for the truck, being the first one in there trying to like <laughs> grab it, I was left in the dust. So yeah, I mean, I wish I was one of those people that stockpiled toilet paper. Let me in the comments down below. Were you one of those people? If you were, did I have a negative effect on you? Because it sure as well made my toilet life so much harder. Thing to do with keeping them safe. Buying toilet paper was a simple coping mechanism for people to deal with their stress. When under stress, the frontal cortex stops functioning at full capacity. Our emotional brain kicks into higher gear. It overpowers our rational thinking. We feel like we're losing a sense of control. We have difficulty in controlling our impulses and delay our gratification. We stop making rational decisions when it comes to buying. That's so true. I, I mean, I didn't feel it in terms of toilet paper, but I definitely did things to gain a little bit of more of a sense of control and a, a bit more of an emotional response, something to feel good. I will never forget, I actually ordered some things from Crown. So Crown is a hotel in Melbourne and around Australia, um, and they have an online store. And I remember buying like bath mats, robes, the smell of the hotel. I remember buying like the scent diffuser and various other things because I, at that point, missed traveling so much. I just felt like trapped. I felt like I was just stuck in my house and I just wanted to escape. And I'll never forget the night that package came and I unboxed all of these things and I was like smelling the diffuser and I just was like transported somewhere else. It's very much an emotional response and some people that, you know, impacted their toilet paper <laughs> buying. Some people that was luxury shopping. Some people that was Amazon purchase. Some people that was like random stuff like me buying hotel gift, so gift store things. The miracle of modern abundance means more human beings have near instant access to affordable products than in any other time in the history of the world. With online shopping available 24 seven, it's very tempting to shop online all the time and to seek that instant gratification and to seek that instant reward. We think Amazon is in the retail business, but in reality, Amazon is in the instant gratification business. Oh, I like that. We think Amazon is in the retail business, but they're in fact in the instant gratification business. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. The human brain was not evolved to interact with a computer screen. The human brain was evolved to interact with other humans. Shopping Fast. is often easy and cheap. It makes sense that human neuropsychology might not be prepared to effectively navigate the constant deluge of social media shopping ads and one-click purchase buttons. Many companies subtly use crowd influence to nudge us to buy products. Imagine you try to buy a microphone for your computer. Amazon helps you make that decision by showing you the best sellers, the Amazon's choice, and those products that have the highest ratings. It's so true. I mean, even some websites use peer pressure. How many times have you logged onto a website and it said down the bottom, or you're looking at a particular item and it says, oh, like Sally just purchased this and she lives here, or like seven people are looking at this item right now. It's like, no, they're not. I call BS. I call BS. Stop trying to make me feed into peer pressure in order to buy this. It's like a, it's almost like, it's like a sense of belonging. Oh my God, these people want it too. I want it. I want it as well. They think it's good. Like, oh, it's what everyone wants. Twisted. It is twisted. So Amazon pretty much has made that decision for you before you even went to Amazon. We often use credit cards when shopping online, which means there's a disconnect between our present self that gets to enjoy the new item and our future self who has to deal with the consequences. So true. Again, look at I'm stopping this every five seconds. <laughs> I look, I see this as well when I look at my niece and nephew and let me know in the comments down below if you have children or nieces and nephews and you feel the same way. Their, their relationship and their education with finances and money, I think is gonna be very different and maybe a little bit warped. Um, just because I remember in my day, back in my day, you know, I was given pocket money, physical money. Now Nowadays, banks are coming out with children's cards. Like they have something called a Spriggy card, which is basically like a kid's card. Um, and it's not the same thing, you know, tapping a card, it is not the same thing as actually physically having money and handing over money. And I'm really interested and slightly alarmed to see the effects on children this is gonna have. The Is it going to make these kids' relationship with money worse than maybe mine or people in my generation because of they didn't have that grasp, that sense of the physical product and the physical handing over of cash? I'm really interested slash scared <laughs> to see where this, where this goes in the future and what our children and our children's children's relationship with money is and this kind of instant gratification that they're kind of growing up with and, and accustomed to. 
Credit card companies and loan companies know this very well. They intentionally disconnect the present self and the future self. When we spend money with cash, we can feel which we don't that do anymore. money is leaving I mean, a lot of us. This is why spending money with a credit card, we tend to spend more simply because we don't feel the pain of paying. Companies want to give us the illusion that we're in control. When people have a better shopping experience, guess what? They buy more. It can be difficult to stop spending that's driven by the emotional brain, but it's not impossible. The important thing is you create some barriers between your desire to shop and shopping. In the old days, we did not shop every day. We shop maybe once or twice a week. Designate a day in the week to shop. Allow yourself some time between the moment you think of buying something and the time you buy something. Stress reduction can strengthen our ability to resist the shopping impulse. Terry is a committed runner. It helps temper his desire to buy too many books. One way to lower our stress is physical activity. Anytime you feel like you're under stress, instead of going to shop, go outside, move your body. When your muscles become relaxed, your stress level goes down. Another way to reduce your stress is to seek social support. When you're connected with other people, you gain a sense of safety. That sense of safety can blunt your stress response and make your frontal cortex function. Great shit! Online shopping has become the predominant way for us to buy things in our lives. But are we going to adapt this in a bad way or in a good way? The answer is not clear yet. One thing that stood out to me in that was that, you know, when he feels the urge to buy too many books, he goes for a run. Being outdoors, being active, we've spoken about this before, but it definitely has a really good impact on your health and obviously your, your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health. Uh, and also, I mean, back when I was in the, the luxury space, the, the designer fashion space, I knew of women and I, I had interactions with women who would often, you know, open up to me about, oh God, I'm, you know, trying this diet or I'm trying to lose some weight, this, that and the other, because they felt, I mean, maybe it was also coming from a health point of view, but they felt uncomfortable in their body. They felt not happy in their body and the size of their body, the clothes that they had, you know, the size of their clothes, that their general body shape. Um, and a lot of them would turn to buying handbags because, I mean, we've spoken about this in another video, I'll have it linked, but handbags are easy. You don't need to try anything on, you know, you don't need to have that an uncomfortable, crappy feeling of, oh my God, these jeans don't fit. Ugh, you know, a handbag will always fit you. And that's why I think a lot of women are drawn to handbags because it also, which is what it was for me, it drew away my insecurities. You know, if I had this really pretty, sparkly, amazing, design a handbag on my arm. I thought that was going to defer away from my insecurities. Physical, my physical insecurities, but also my inadequacy, my my insecurities about who I was and what I was and maybe not being good enough. And I think a lot of women are drawn to shopping when they're not feeling great about themselves. When in actual fact, if you're not feeling great about your body, if you're not feeling great about yourself physically or even mentally, emotionally, the last thing that is going to help you long-term is shopping. If you're not feeling great about your body, going out for a run or exercise or cooking a healthy meal, that is going to help you see long-term change with the actual root of the problem. If you're not feeling great about yourself and you know if you don't feel good enough, sitting with yourself, um, working on something, learning something new, a language, a musical instrument, any of those things can also make you feel better and raise your confidence. Getting out and being social, interacting with other people is one of the biggest things you can do for yourself. And I'm not talking being social when it comes to shopping. Another thing that I wanted to, to touch on that I thought was super interesting, the instant gratification business and this idea that it's very true. Like, I guess I never really thought about it too much, but back in the, back in the day, you know, you couldn't shop. You couldn't shop like that. Right now, even for instance, oh God, ran out of this this morning. Log onto my phone, ding, 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 ding. Swipe, paid for. And then that often leads me to find, oh, another item that was recommended. Oh, that looks good as well. Add to cart swipe off and then you've ended up adding something to your cart that you didn't need or you didn't actually want. I'm going to actually really look into trying two things. One, paying with card less. I mean, maybe not even that. Maybe I'll move from paying with my stupid Apple Pay to maybe paying with a card and then maybe eventually, maybe I'll try to pay with cash more. I don't know if this is what it's like in your country, but they're definitely kind of, we're seeing a lot less cash. It's almost like we're being discouraged mm. to pay with cash. It's not as common. And yeah, I want to try that. But I also want to try the, the notion of when I run out of something or when I think I need something, writing it down on a list on a notepad or something and then dedicating an hour or two a week to actually shop back, back like in the old days, you know, like when you'd be like, okay, it's Saturday, we need to go shopping to get our things. Maybe I want to try to do that instead because then I'd actually maybe write down everything I think I need, look at that list, 
since, you know, as the week's gone by and having some breathing room, it might actually make me look at that list and think, oh, wow, wow, I can't believe I thought I needed that. I don't actually need that. <laughs> um, that actually might be really helpful as well. This video was really, or well, the video we reacted to was quite short and sweet, but if you want to watch it without my constant interruptions, and if you want to watch it and have a think and see if anything else comes up for you, I'm going to have it linked down below. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on today's video on the video that we reacted to and that um, we watched together. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, especially around this time of year. I'd love to know if you're kind of struggling or if you're pretty, pretty okay. Um, and yeah, share with me all your thoughts in this video. I'd love to hear from you. I'm going to have another few links here right here. If you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to join me over there. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I'll see you in my next one.